All right, it is Georgie Karkanian, who uh, clearly, although nearly 16 years into a professional career, is working hard. I can see from the sweat yeah, tipping yeah. off here right now. But is that crazy? I mean, 16 years as a pro, you're almost at this point, man. Just talk to me about the feeling of, you know, being in the game that long and kind of, I guess, where the, the passion for the sport still is. Yeah, man. I mean, first of all, like, I mean, I love fighting. I, uh, I'm so happy that uh, all the... I mean, fighting when you when you do it full time and it's it's so hard. There's so many. This 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 is the road, you know, up up and down, up and down, and uh, it could break you. Where if it breaks you, you're gonna stop fighting, or it, it could just push you. But man, I mean, I strive off of all my losses. So I I see guys like Joel Romero, and I'm like, man, he's like, and he's 44, I think 45, and I'm like, for sure, I'm gonna pass him. I'm only 37. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 37. I mean, I, I feel great. Uh, I mean, I love fighting. You know, I, I have a lot of uh, goals in me left. I mean, I'm looking at that Bellator lightweight title, even though the division is like, you, we don't know. It's uncertain, you know. So, but, you know, I, like I said, I mean, I have many, many years in me left. And I feel like when this, uh, when this hunger goes away and I, I'm, I, I don't like waking up to train or get beat up or get hit in the face, then I'm going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of time to go before that all right you talked about it man this that's just the game we play wins and losses it's it is what it is but you know these last two i'm sure were frustrating for you but uh i mean is there anything you point to were there any lessons you took out of it that you said oh i know what it was we got to go fix this i mean can you still do that at this point in your career yeah i mean john if you if you look at my last two losses because I'm, I'm looking at myself like from the outside if those last two losses were like knockout knockout and then like you know it's just like Fuck, maybe George's chin is gone. And then, especially after that AJ fight, people are like, oh, okay, his chin. So, and then I moved up a weight. You know, I showed that, you know, I could hang with guys like Jury, Miles Jury, even, even though I think he's a little pussy for holding me for fucking, you know, I don't know what he was holding me for. But my losses at 155 are pretty much the guys that are holding me down. And, and I'll admit it, like Sal Rogers did a great job taking me down, holding me down. Did he hurt me? No. I mean, did I try to finish him? Absolutely. I mean, I had a 10-day notice, and I tried to finish him with the flying knee, but then Adam Piccolotti uh, followed Sal Rogers' game plan. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys just 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 go to where they're safe at. So I, looking at those two fights, I don't feel like I'm defeated. It's a good place for me to start off. Got to work on my wrestling. It's obvious. I mean, look at Marab, Marab versus Jose Aldo. It, didn't look, it looked very ugly, but Marab did his job. And one, you know, keep wrestling all those, keep wrestling all those. So this is where it's going. So, I mean, uh, it's it's no brainer. You know, I mean, I've lost to Joe Warren in the past and I fixed my wrestling. I came back and I destroyed a few guys. So it's a little hurdle of 155. And, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm again to win streak and get close to that belt. I love it, man. So seven months between fights. I did wonder if that was purposeful that maybe you did want to take some time away and just drill wrestling or no. I kind of thought maybe you, you seem like you'd fight every weekend if they let you. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I always said, like I like that, you know, I like to stay busy. I uh, I bug them, bug them. I, I try to fight, what's his name? Usman Nurmagomedov. And it's obviously they're trying to uh, do to do what's best for them. Uh, it's Habib's brother, so they're trying to make him fight for a belt, which is understandable. But, uh, I mean, uh, I, I'll get my hands on some of those Russians for sure. Let me let me get on a, a little win streak, but. I, I want to stay busy. So they're like, listen, we have the show in Ireland. That's the only one that's available. So I, I jumped on it, but I, I kept bugging him though, throughout the whole seven months. I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Just in case someone falls apart, I'm ready. I'm ready. But here I am. You know, I have like a few more weeks left. That's funny. All right. So you got K Musa is who you got instead of Nurmagomedov. getting off. Uh, what do you think about the matchup stylistically? What, what do you think of him as an opponent? Uh, stylistically, uh, we match up great. He, yeah, he, he's passed a few fights. Uh, he kept the standing, but you never know. He might watch my last few fights. <laughs> he might turn into a wrestler. But, uh, yeah, we're working on our wrestling really hard uh, because, you know, it's, it's – it's, I, I cannot lose this. Any, anywhere I look at this next fight, I cannot lose. There's no way I'm losing this fight. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm uh, working on my wrestling and uh, going to a lot of boxing gyms. So, it's obvious with me. I'm going to keep it standing. I'm going to try to knock you out. I'm going to try to finish you uh, – and try to submit you. But I think his opponent, he's good. He's from England. And, yeah, should be a good one. 
what would be more satisfying for you, Georgie? Because I know that you want to stand and bank. So if he stands and trades you, that's fun, right? That's what you enjoy. But would it almost be more satisfying, like, if he does try to wrestle you and you're able to, like, stuff all the takedowns and show, like, yeah, I got, I got some wrestling skills? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, he goes to wrestle me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to bring a few stuff out of my pocket, you know? I mean, I fought lots of top wrestlers, Bubba Jenkins, Lance Palmer, and I did what I had to do. Uh, to beat them so I mean man I, I'll do whatever I can and uh, if he's trying to wrestle me I mean I'll turn into a little Dagestani boy and I'll start wrestling him too <laughs> <laughs> I love it all right and you're heading, heading over to Dublin um, talk to me about that I mean uh, it, it worked out well last time you went over there I mean do you do you enjoy it? I mean that's a, kind of a, a wild audience a big a good crowd over there I mean do you, do you enjoy it or is it kind of just a pain in the ass having to travel the time change and all that stuff no, no, I enjoy it. Like, I mean, the time change, I would be fine right now. And I, I do all my heart training usually in the mornings. So it's it's perfect. Uh, it's it's going to be fun, actually, because I'm uh, taking my family. So it's for the first time my kids are going to be in the arena. And my son, actually, actually, when my son was born, I fought there. So that's why I'm taking him to Ireland to kind of see the place, to see me fight. So I, I have that extra pressure. You know, my kids are in the arena, so I better look fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, man, that's a tough one, right? Like, you know, there was a lot of discussion about that this past week, actually, because Kamara Usman's uh, kid was in the arena. And, you know, it, it's a weird thing, right? Because I, I wonder, too, like, on the one hand, so talk to me how you think about it, right? Because for your kids, like, I get it. I mean, I'm a parent as well. I'm definitely not a fighter. But, like, you want your kids to see what you do, and you want them to experience what you experience, and you want them to understand you a little more, right? But the flip side of it is this is a dangerous game we play, man, yeah. and, and they may have to see something that's, not great for them to see. So how do you approach all that? Yeah, you know, I, I heard I heard Usman's uh, daughter. Uh, she was crying when she saw that knockout. Which, I mean, I feel bad. You know, you don't want a kid to go through something like that. But then uh, what about when Usman put Jorge Mazova to sleep? Maybe she was in the arena. She saw that too, you know. So it's, it's like the ups and downs are high. So, uh, I, I mean, I told, my, I told my girl, like, if it's something, like, if I'm bleeding really bad, you could take him out of the arena so if it's something crazy happens but other than that i mean my, my kids they both uh do jujitsu full-time so they attend my classes every day they see me train they see me sweat they see me get hit so they're kind of used to that but uh you know this this is just the one time of thing i don't think i'm gonna do it one time and that's it <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a weird position because like i said it's it's the reality of what you do you know what i mean so what's the point of hiding it they can just watch it on you know TV later, but yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. it's it's a unique thing. This is a this is a crazy game that we're involved in, man. It's, oh, it's a nutty one. It's it's a very very cold sport. It's so cold you can't even stand it. <laughs> so true, man. So true. All right. Well, listen. So talk about the goal here, George. Yeah, you said. I mean, win at all costs, right? I mean, would you go out there and win a boring fight? I mean, if, if that's what it takes to win, I mean, that's not who you are as a fighter. But I mean, what's the goal here? Is it just get a win by any means necessary, or is it? you know, let's do something spectacular and get some people talking and get this run started? Or is it like just, man, bottom line, we just got to get a win here? Uh, the win has got to be there, John. But, I mean, we're in 2022. And the way it works right now in the fight game, you could be on a 10-fight win streak, but they all, but they could be all by decision. It's boring. People don't like to see that. If, if you really want to make a name of yourself, if you really want to move up really fast, fans, media – promoters they go behind back in the stage they congratulate you they love finishes so i'm i'm gonna go out there it's in my head listen joe i'm on my, i'm on a two fight losing streak so i'm gonna be like i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to like kill whoever's in front of me but at the end of the day i'm gonna be smart but again it's, it has to be exciting especially for those fans my last show was exciting so i'm gonna go back it's kind of not fair to put a boring performance and again like if i'm talking about fighting for titles I have to go out there and finish wherever they're going to give me, you know, like I got to finish in a decisive way. Yeah. I know you're always looking entertained. That's for sure, man. Well, it's September 23rd. It's Bellator 285. It's in Dublin. If you can't make it in Dublin, of course, you can see it on Showtime. Uh, Georgia, what kind of fight do we see, man? I mean, you're, you're playing this thing out of your head. Do you think it's going to be, you know, an insane fight as you uh, put on from time to time? Or what, what do we see here? Yeah, my brother. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to keep my hands up, go forward. Like I said, man, I've been, uh, I've been going to uh, some good boxing gyms, like uh, to train on my hands and spar with really high level boxers. And you know, at 37, uh, you know, I've been I've been doing my thing. And like I said, I'm gonna show up there on a 
September 23rd or whatever day it falls out, 24th. <laughs> and then I'm going to handle my business. I mean, I'm not flying out there 13 hours. I'm not bringing my whole family to look mediocre. I'm going to be the best Georgie there ever been. I love it. What a way to say it. Well, listen, hopefully you get to show a little bit of the wrestling skills, but not a lot of them, <laughs> just a little bit. And then we just stand and trade and we get a fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you. I will. I will. <laughs> All right.